Hi and welcome. This is a complimentary study about the current in-game controllers. It was originally meant to be part of the video, DCS Cold War Biggest Issue. However, given this part is long, poorly engaging and actually boring, I decided to separate it and put it into a dedicated video. Feel free to skip ahead to the conclusions. The first test is the classic bogey dope spamming. A target approaches zero cut, high VC. The AWACS is located about 200 nautical miles from the action. The green thingy spinning represents a radar antenna, completing a full sweep every 10 seconds. For simplicity's sake, the bearing and range are updated at the same time. A minor discrepancy is expected due to how values are collected. The indented timestamps represent updates from the AI AWACS. One, one, in field, one, one, 
field. One, one. Request bogey dope. Enfield, one, one. Overlord, one, one. Enfield, one, one. Request bogey dope. Enfield, one, one. Overlord, one, one. Enfield, one, one. Request bogey dope. Bogey dope. Enfield one one. Overlord one one. Enfield one one. Request bogey dope. Enfield one one. Overlord one one. Enfield one one. Request bogey dope. All is well until the range decreases and the spam starts. The values highlighted by the red square represent quicker updates than the 10 second sweep. Although the game adds a pause between request and reply, the information provided is updated in real time. If bearing and range were calculated every 10 seconds and not in real time, the AWACS would have communicated the values reported in this table. The difference is not a problem, just a few degrees. However, a few degrees at 50 nautical miles becomes a huge difference when the range decreases to 5 to 10 nautical miles. The numbers may be easily off by 20 or 30 degrees in these cases. As a consequence of the previous observations, there is a strong possibility that real-time updates make the life of aircraft hugging the ground much harder. In other words, a sweep every 10 seconds necessitates the target to be illuminated by the radar at the very moment the contact is not hiding, for instance, due to a brief area of open ground between hills and valleys. With real-time updates instead, that moment is sufficient to be spotted, as the AI often calls pop-up groups. Another issue with the controller's radars in the game is the probability of detection. Compared to the example discussed in this video's twin, in DCS, a target is either seen or not by controllers, and no paints are sometimes missed when an aircraft operates at the limits of the radar system. Last test, the scanned volume of an AWACS. I placed two contacts flying at 500 feet and 60,000 feet hot on an AWACS flying at 20,000 feet, and I requested pictures. Interestingly, the AWACS was able to track them even when they were literally on top of it. On the other hand, the AWACS failed to track them later for a half dozen miles. I am unfamiliar with the radar technology used by AWACS aeroplanes, but I wonder how a contact flying 20,000 feet lower than the observer's radar is even detectable. Not to mention that such a contact was spotted along the one flying 37,000 feet above the AWACS. Anyway, to wrap up this video, here are some observations. The scanned volume would make Sauron envy. It sees everything, 
everywhere, piercing even through clouds and forests with no adverse effects. Reported aspect is wrong unless I am missing something. Good thing that range is approximated. The game adds a delay in the response, but the info provided is still updated in real time. Ago, it is just a palliative. Probability of detection absent. As mentioned in the other video, given how the Cold War is finally getting some traction and love, seeing AI controllers in this status is just disheartening. An overhaul may be too expensive, resources and time-wise, but addressing the list above would make the experience much more immersive. Thanks for watching and take care.